the Empire State Building, yo. The last one of the 12 boys in the city. 40 second people. This is where everything's gonna happen tonight. Let's see where we go. What are you gonna go see over there? Toys. Huh? Toys. Toys? My name is Dominic Gonzalez. And for the past few months, I've been forcing myself to go outside and quite literally touch grass. Don't get me wrong, I've always appreciated Mother Nature's beauty, but from afar. So what's up, you, uh, what other movie you want to see? Maybe over here. Where? Over here. Where? Over here! People, seen through the eyes of <laughs> Growing up in New York, it was different. I didn't have access to all this. I became a proud homebody. Now, I'm making up for lost time, trying to care a little more about our planet up close and personal. It all started here on April 29th. My girlfriend Ashley and I took our dog Natasha to her grandparents' property. The only reason I even hit record here was to document some of Natasha's firsts. This being the first time she met Macy. Eventually, I started to really hear the birds in the distance. Like, I gotta keep an eye on this dog. She's just gonna run me over. Ashley's grandparents live far enough out of town that nature's white noise playlist can be heard on repeat. My attention was taken hostage, and my cameras did what all cameras do, silently witnessing and documenting my slow descent into madness. The trees around me seemed to dance in excitement, luring me in with every leaf rustle. Nature's sirens. They waited 22 years for this moment. They had me and they weren't letting go. The next day I went back, I wasn't really sure what for though but I knew I had to take my own hostages in the form of digitized memories. I also knew I wasn't in control. I was almost certain that Mother Nature used me as a vessel to document herself. It was the only logical explanation I had at the time. I can't describe your imperfections Everything became cinematic. The shadows cast by the leaves, the curves in the trees, and the colors just vibrant. best friend 
few years ago, Ashley's family had invited me to their yearly tradition of picking out a real tree for Christmas. Fake plastic trees are all I knew up until that point. The Hayes aren't the only ones with a lot of land in the family. Ashley's aunt and uncle have almost three times the amount of acreage. Like the Hayes family, they had no hesitation in allowing me to film on their property. I was told I'd even get a tour of the trail they've made. I'm not entirely sure I fully grasped how big their property was until I went through a good bit of it. I wish I could say I toured it all, but there was a lot left to see. It was incredible. These families have their own private forests. Oh, what is this? What's what? This is stuff stuck on me. Which one? Terrifying. They're not ticks, Tommy. You know, you might get some. Actually, you probably will. Because they're probably in the tree. Web. It feels like there's a web on me. Gross. The average cost of land today across the United States is 12,000 an acre. Of course, the Hayes and Burkines were smart enough to invest as soon as possible because they've already earned their money back and then some. After nearly an hour of exploring, I forgot I was still on someone's property. This land, in a nutshell, was purchased because why not? This is now, as long as the Burkine family can help it, private land preserve. These trees will continue to grow and the ecosystem back here will continue to thrive. With this much land, the possibilities are endless. Developers are on the hunt and have reached out to the Burkines trying to shake them into selling just an inch of their property. Yes, I have uh, 40 acres. Well, I wanted uh, land, so January of 2017, we sold our house. I guess that the 16th of uh, October. So he's looking for land, and we ran across this land that was showed up on Zillow that already had a house on it. We were wanting 20 acres. So January, we saw this house list, and I told Heather, let's go look at it because it's already got a house on it. It's only 10 years old. So we walked in the house and fell in love with it. We wanted land. I wanted to just 
have enough uh, room for the boys to build a fort, you know, have some ATVs, UTVs to drive on, and that's really why. Yeah, that's cool. Go walk outside and pee, and nobody can see me. <laughs> 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 you know, neighbors. Hey, yeah, that's neighbors. my job. The country boys don't use a the bathroom. They exactly. find a tree. <laughs> oh, Everywhere yeah, you're is right, our bathroom. Yeah. Find a tree. Everywhere is our bathroom. That's it. Absolutely terrifying. Oh, I have a tick on me. What? Oh, it's on my leg. Oh my god, we gotta go back now. It's we, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't like this at all. This is a bad idea. If you have a tick, I must have them too. Oh god. Oh god. It was just crawling on my leg. Oh god. It's okay. Here, you go, you lead the way. So if a web, if you run into a web, it's you, not me. Wow, you're the older one here. Yeah. But what if I'm blind now? What if I can't see? Well. You don't like that idea. either. No. You're fine. He must have ticks on him too, right? Yeah, circle, sit, stop. Oh, he does? No, that doesn't fit. Oh. Yeah, it probably goes all the way Pick me flowers where I'm sleeping in the field. Mold the house out of. Make your tea in the morning when you wake. This property, though, is not home to just the Burkins. It's for local wildlife. Call me things. Call me pleasant news. And oh, I'm glad. And where there's wildlife, there's some interesting morning surprises.
piece on the spine, I think. Jeez. I know. Something came and ate it. That stuff or something came and ate it. So the coyote just got stuck on the fence? Yeah, and something came and ate it. Oh, wow. That's what I'm guessing. We found it the other day, yesterday. Just right in there. Wow. What do you think it was? They ate it. Another, uh, another coyote? No. I don't think they would do that, but buzzards might have been eaten. Buzzards? What's a buzzard? It's a bird. Oh. That eat dead. I didn't know that. Probably things that are stuck. Very interesting. Or... A monster. Fox. Wow. After speaking with Brian, it was clear that the financial gain in purchasing land was only one perk. I wouldn't be surprised if it was even an afterthought. At the root of this purchase was legacy. Land that will support their family values and their needs for privacy, preservation, and playtime.
Hog. Come on, this way. Go up. Tell me, right? You could do it? Yeah. So let me see you do it. You got it, Papa. You got it. Go up. Go up. <laughs> True, but you see, but now you, you got him on video tape when he's 12. Then you look at it and it's, it's incredible. You get that look at what you was doing 10 years ago. Yeah. I wanted to take a moment and highlight those that made this documentary even possible. What are we gonna go do? We're gonna go get Natasha, we're gonna go get the puppy. The little baby girl. If it weren't for Natasha, I wouldn't have been recording that one day. Similarly, if it weren't for Ashley, there wouldn't be a Natasha or land to film on. Okay, this is it. How's it going? Bye. He just said tail that he's still feeling. Her tail's still Yeah, he's not ready. Seeing Natasha grow right before my eyes and being able to document even a little bit of it along the way has been special. I've been wanting to make a documentary for a while, and when Natasha came into the picture, I thought, a documentary focused solely on her and her life could be interesting. However, that would, well, take her whole life. Now the party's about to leave. Wow. Or no, the party's about to get there. <laughs> Dominic's out here taking pictures of our trees and our weeds, and we won't take any pictures of my flowers. <laughs> I'm, giving him a hard, oh. I'm giving him a hard time right, now. Give <laughs> Dominic a hard time? Yeah, he took pictures of all the poison ivy, but he won't take pictures of my flowers. <laughs> In just three months, she's quadrupled her size and speed. Ashley, on the other hand, has always loved to travel, and I've only recently adopted the same affinity for it. love of visiting new places and being outside has made this whole project that much more interesting. As for the most part, I've got a partner to guide me along the way. What are you looking at? Dominic? This is a picnic uh, area. And we are up in Cabrini. Indeed. These are the Cabrini pillars. As you can see, this is a nice sculpture. Yeah. 
I have only recently used our travels for more documentary content, specifically during our trip to Texas. It was an amazing opportunity to not only visit family, but to get a feel of what a new environment outside of Tennessee was like through these new nature-colored lenses of mine. Belton Lake was our first feel for what Texas had to offer, and it did not disappoint. The water wasn't too cold, as the weather in Texas at the time was a consistent high of over 100 degrees. It was also my first time seeing a great blue heron up close. The next day, I set my sights to Chalk Ridge Falls State Park. I tried to get there fairly early to beat the 100 degree weather, but it quickly caught up to me. Fortunately, I found enough shade under the trees. The main reason I came here was to see the falls in Chalk Ridge Falls. The main attraction to the park, and it's beautiful. I was mesmerized by the flowing water. Witness it up close and you'll likely feel the same. I wasn't prepared to just how far out the water behind the waterfall went, so I had to cut my visit fairly short. However, I have every intention of making my way back there eventually. A month later, we made it to New York, my hometown. Oh, the 
Close down the bar scroll, open. And shut. Open. And shut. Open. And shut. Close on the bus. Go open. And shut. All around the airport. And the wheels on the bus do go round and round, but I can't show you that part. If they were going round and round, we would be going thump, thump, thump. <laughs> Was that remarkable? Becoming a homebody was purely my own doing because in hindsight, there was so much to do and see right at the tip of my fingers that I just had no idea of. Fortunately, my cousin John knew exactly where to go. Van Cortlandt Park is about a 15 minute walk from where I used to live for over a decade. I'm more familiar with the outer areas of Van Cortlandt Park that consisted of a community pool, a jungle gym, and some picnic areas. Where we were headed was deep into the park. It was unknown territory. Now, my parents can argue that I've actually been here before, but today, I'm looking at the park through my brand new natured colored lenses. They have to, uh, that's why they gotta like, um, they gotta be cleaning because it's not like ruin the environment. <laughs> Trust me. John had a handful of gems to show us and proved to be a fairly good travel guide. Stop one, the marina and a nice clearing showcasing the huge body of water at the center of the park. Stop two, the Van Cortland Mansion. So this is like where all the overgrown grasses and the circle that's where they used to have the statues. And then uh, over here used to be a trail because this trail you would connect to the pool right here as you can see. And then to our right, half of the shrubbery, this would be uh, the opening towards the mansion. The Van Cortland Mansion. Where George Washington actually stayed, believe it or not. Look who's really this rabbit! Oh my god! Oh, oops! Hey! He was just chilling. Come back! That was a lot of rabbits. That was a lot of rabbits. Lot of rabbits. Oh. We're getting a little history lesson here today. Uh-huh. Yeah, but George, George Washington was here when uh, he was really duking it out with the, with the British. He was, really, he was really throwing them dukes. By me, I mean him. We can go up here, obviously it's like gated off, but like it's cool to just like see the snaps and stuff like that. Isn't there like a security guard that comes on you? Maybe a park ranger coming in from out. Oh, they just kind of like they're You don't see very many like.
But to get back to your question, the Van Coylens were pretty much like Dutch people uh-huh. and they owned a shit ton of land. It was just a rich, wealthy family and they had a lot of land. Are they known for anything or they just own a lot of land? They could be known for something. This is I could get back to you on that. They could be right in history doing some like small stuff. Yeah, my fucking on a week of sex with They were around like in the 1700s, 1800s, though. Like, I, remember, I think they passed away. Uh, I think they passed away like in the 1800s. Like, they were like around like 1800. This mansion looks bigger from down there. Notice how there's like, like a security go camera at the front door. So bad. Oh yeah. Like it's freaky looking, but like. Thing I would always think like about. But as you go for like you know, as you come further back and you look at it, you can actually see the front door. Oh, excuse me. That would be probably really cool to like, see inside. Like even in whatever stage. Stop through, Geese Central. With the geese being as territorial and aggressive as they are, we made it sure to keep our distance. This area of the park had the best view of just how large the body of water is. For a brief moment, I forgot I was in New York City because it's hard for my brain to attribute something like this to a state known for its skyscrapers and industrial marvels. Stop four. John promised he saved the best for last. It took a little bit of a walk to get to this part of the park, but it was surely worth it. So what's this, and why is it locked? It's a cemetery. cemetery. <gasps> it's <laughs> very disrespectful. Oh no. There used to be more tombstones. Yeah, let's let's get away from the uh, tombstones. Yeah. Yeah. The cemetery. Actually, be our destination. It might be some climbing, but I'll go first and I'll help everybody up. There are way down. Well, did we? <laughs> that angle's gone. <laughs> the view was breathtaking and definitely worth all the climbing that we did. The cliff overlooked the rest of the park and gave a little taste of the Bronx skyline. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool, so where are we going today? I said we're going to the picnic. Oh, with who? With you. And who else? Me. Yeah, but who else? Nobody else. What do you mean nobody else? How about the school? No. How about your friends at school? No. What do you mean no? 
his friends and that is the cheese bus where we at you don't know you don't know where we at it's the park for the picnic John what's up it's Nico's little friends the whole class teachers the next class. We all here. Did you see the pool? Yeah. Mama, we gotta come over here. We gotta come, mommy, to come, to come here. Look at all the ducks. Could we go see them? Wow, mama, this is huge. Look. Look at that playground. Oh my god. Come on, look at the ducks, guys. Come on. Come over here. Oh my God, they're so big. That's it, they're off. Behind my apartment complex was this huge field, most likely marked for a new development. There was no way for me to make sure of this, but the way that the rest of our town was growing, it was only fair to assume that this would be reserved for new homes and apartments. And that's kind of sad, if it's true. How much land is actually left on the earth? Can we just keep building and growing forever? Like Obviously not, but when does it end? It's so weird to think about. I feel like it's property that's eventually going to be like turned into housing, if I could guess. I took myself deep into the complex to see what I could find. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I was surprised with just how much land was back there. I was expecting to see a deer or something, because I'll often see them walking back here in the mornings, but no luck. What I'm walking on is most likely a game trail, or the path that these animals frequent. But to where? Dunbar Cave State Park was only about a 20 minute drive away, so we checked it out. I'ma let most of this speak for itself, but I had a good time.
There was one eerie part of the trip, which was the entrance to the actual cave. Oh, it is so cold. Maybe she doesn't like the cold. It's actually quite scary. It was blocked off, but you can still see the inside, which was actually nothing because it was pitch black. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you get a good shot now. There it is. Here, how's that? Yeah! Now she's gonna whip it around. Yep, no, that's... You whip it. That's perfect, you can whip it now. Okay. It's been a long time coming, but I'm finally warming up to the beauties of nature. This project has taken me out of my shell and awarded me with a new love. I'm thankful to have documented Tennessee of all places. It surely is one of the most breathtaking states I've had the pleasure of being in. This experience has been hard, but nothing good ever comes easy. It's so important to protect our forests as much as we can, and I understand that more than I ever have before. So I want to challenge you to go outside today, wherever you are, and just take it all in. The white noise of the countryside, or the hustle and bustle of the city. Look for the greenery. Smile at the towering trees. Stop and smell the roses. These are things we all take for granted, so let's take care of what we have so we won't have to think about life without it.
we got we got a cheap deal because it was like a thousand an acre when we bought ours. Wow, Ooh. seven thousand yeah. for uh, well, that's fourteen thousand for fourteen acres. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think like a rough estimate on how much it's worth now? What does tax say? Thirty uh, something. Just the land before we put the house on it was worth seventy thousand, I think. So it went so, well. But that's yeah. thirty Times, years too. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And do you know about yours? Um, so 15 years ago, we bought seven acres across the street from them and uh, sold it for, we bought it for 3,000 an acre and sold it for seven grand an acre. Wow. Um, we bought this whole place for, with the house on it, for 360. And Zillow says the whole place, including the house, which is crazy, is worth eight seventy. Whoa! Yeah. And how? And how long? How many years? Five years. Jeez. But he can't replace it for that. No, buy land. there's no way to. No. So if he sells it, he can't buy another one for that amount of money. It's Not with similar this land. Yeah. So, so you have to downsize yeah. or get you more money. So. The moral of the story is buy buy land, invest yeah. in land. Well, yeah. invest in some land. Like, uh, I had an old friend of mine uh, years and years ago when I was a kid said that uh, buy land because they, they quit making it a long time ago. That's no kid, buddy. It's only so much land out there. Yeah. Freedom. What's up, party people?
Yeah. <laughs>